folks, Canadian Prepper. So we are simulating a post-apocalyptic barter scenario. I got Ron over here from Atlas Survival Shelters. He was able to survive the apocalypse in his bunker. He's got some gold backs because that's the only currency now because everybody uses the real or the former fiat currency to wipe their butts because that's all it's useful for nowadays. So what can I do for you? I, so I want some food. There's nowhere to get food. I either got to grow it or buy whatever you got and I want to buy some of that peak stuff. Here. All right, so I've got... Uh, now what is this? What is this thing here anyways? Well, this, this is... Um, so what the gold back is, is, it's a way to break gold down. You can't like use a whole ounce of gold but when it's broken down, it's a small denominations of gold. So, are you, so are you telling me that that's real gold? This is 24 karat real gold. And now it's got a little plastic sign or a little plastic cover over it, but that if you melted that, you get a little bit of gold. And if you melted a thousand of these, you would get an ounce of gold. So it's partial gold. Not surprising to me that one of these is one one thousandth of an ounce. That's what it is, it's partial gold and also Cool thing about the gold back, it comes in one, five, 10, 25, and 50s. So I did a video a while back when I was at the uh, prepper show. And uh, I went around, I bought a stove, I bought a, I forget what brand the stove is, but it was $200. So I gave them a 50 gold back, which is equivalent to $200 American. But then I went and bought some beef jerky that was like $8. So I gave them two of these. So I talked to the, the gold back representative and they told me that the reason why $1 worth of gold is worth $4 is because of the manufacturing process. This is a very sophisticated manufacturing process. You're, you're paying a premium, but in any parcel gold, you're gonna pay a premium for it to break it down from one ounce to grams. So basically it's about double the price. So $4,000 or $4,000 that you'll put into gold backs, if you melted it down, would only get you $2,000 in gold, but that's not the part. That's not what you're trying to do. You're, trying to, you're paying the, the service fee for them to create a spendable piece of gold. Right. And that's exactly what they've done. All right, so what are you offering me for uh, food here today? Well, I've you got- You realize I've... prices have inflated drastically as a result of the rising cost of fuel. So the price of food has increased. So well, that's, it's, about, it's about 14 bucks American for each of these right now. Good God. So how much gold backs you got there? Well, I've got, I've got 10 gold backs. That's equivalent to basically $37.20. So you're going to give me a discount since we're kind of friends and all, you know? So I'm going to give you 10 gold backs. And I'll you're gonna you. get, and you're gonna give me three things of that food, and I'm gonna take it. To, I'll tell you what: if you get me a good discount on a bunker, <laughs> maybe we got a deal. How about that? You're gonna get a bunker. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get Nate. I'm just gonna say it publicly. Nate will have a bunker within 12 months of this date because we're gonna do some great things together, aren't we? Yeah. I'll tell you what: I'll give you a beef stroganoff. Okay. As we say in Texas, beef stroke, beef stroganoff. Okay. <laughs> Chicken coconut curry, this is one of the most popular ones. And my, one of my favorites. And we're gonna give you a beef pasta marinara, which is another one of my favorites. This stuff is gonna be worth more than gold someday. Give me, give me the gold backs. Let me get your thumbnail. I'm not giving you the gold back. That's not why they call them gold backs. And how much do you think a bunker is going to go for in 2023 by the time we, uh, <clears throat> by the time we get there? How much do you think a bunker is going to go for? Well, my, my least expensive bunker I have that has the Swiss air system, the gas type door, the bulletproof hatch and everything is that promotional one for $40,000. I mean, they're going to be worth more than gold if we ever really go to war because the only thing that will be worth anything will be food that you can eat, water that you can drink, and medicines to help keep you alive. Now, there will be a lot of other things worth a lot of money, alcohol, cigarettes, and things like that. But if we have an economic breakdown, things like the gold backs will be precious because the dollar will crash, but gold has always been worth something. Through the, through the millennium of time, gold has never lost its value. So the dollar may crash, but the gold will be still worth something. So I saw that movie with Denzel Washington, The Book of Eli. That's pretty much what it would be like if, if all the nukes were set off. We would be living like the Book of Eli. And nowhere in that movie were they trading gold or thing. Everything was trading water or food or fuel. Just stuff. Just stuff. Yeah. And that's how I feel. And of course, that's my opinion. And, uh, but 
if anyone wants to prove me wrong, here's your chance to comment below and say, hey, I, I don't agree with you, but who's, you know, you're going to go try to trade in your cryptocurrency in, <laughs> in, after nuclear war? In the natural evolution of monetary systems, barter and trade always comes before gold and currencies. So, yeah, post-apocalyptic, you're just bartering stuff. But maybe three, four months in, once some kind of government is established, and you know you need some kind of means of currency because you're sick of you know trading sacks of potatoes or whatever. Gold will come back. So you know, sit on your gold. Don't start you know showing all your gold right away because it's going to take a while for civilization to rebuild itself. I'll make it public. I hope no one ever has to use one of my bomb shelters. But I can confidently say, if you ever do need one of my bomb shelters, it will work. I put a lot of passion and heart into it to make sure it has the best air system. The gas tight doors, keep in mind guys, the reason I do put these gas tight doors on my bunkers is because I worry about biological warfare, I worry about a famine like the world has never seen. Let's say there's an airborne plague that the world has never seen. Where would you go? You can't wear the gas mask the whole time. This is why I put so much emphasis on my bunkers being gas tight. Nuclear war is survivable. If you're not in ground zero of the blast, there's about a 90% chance you will survive that, okay? Just gotta be careful what you're eating, be careful what you're drinking. But you talk about a plague that people can't see, you've gotta go into an airtight environment and you've gotta have a shelter like that. So this is why I make my shelters the way I do. I actually put nuclear warfare behind biological. I believe we will see a biological catastrophe in our lifetime before we see a nuclear attack. Now, that may change with what's going on in Ukraine, but I don't think it will be the apocalypse. He may use a, a tactical nuke, but to see all out Armageddon, I think the world will see a biological attack, especially after all this COVID stuff happened that the world has never seen, that will wipe off billions of people, not millions. Of course, that's my opinion, but I'm preparing people with the shelters I built because I'm afraid of this. And the sad thing is, Nate, Everything that I have predicted since I got in this business has come true. I don't like being so right. People go, why do you, why do, you do this? Why do you take the chance? I saw everything coming that is going on right now. I saw it all happening and I don't want to tell you what I see in the future because it'll scare the hell of you. But I am preparing people for something that I predicted and I haven't missed it yet. And that's scary for me. What's your prediction for the next five years? I predict China will invade Taiwan. I predict America will be dragged into a war. I predict North Korea will do something crazy. I, I predict Iran will do something on Israel. I predict a war, a war that the world has never seen and that will make World War II look like child's play. And I'm telling you, every time I go to the grocery store, I take in all the food on the shelves. One day, it won't be there. We've already seen it in our lifetime that there was uh, shortages on food that wasn't there, but I'm talking about every time you see a football game, every time you watch TV, every time you go to the grocery store, every time you put gas in your car, appreciate it, take it in, absorb it, because one day it won't be there. I'm telling you, we are on our last days. And I don't like to say that, and I'm not trying to scare people, but I'm just telling you, it doesn't look good. It doesn't look good at all. So people need to get prepared. And of course, I hope I'm wrong, but the thing is, everything that's happened, I predicted. It's just happening in 10 years. I thought it would be 25 years. Here it is 10 years later, and it's all happening now. So we're on hyperspeed for Armageddon, the way I thought it was gonna happen. I thought I'd die an old man, and the bunkers I would make would be left to my children or their children or other people's children. I didn't think I would be actually using my bunker in my lifetime, I never did. Now I'm thinking, can I get enough bunkers built fast enough? And that's one of the reasons I'm in Canada right now. I'm actually going to Calgary and Edmonton, talking to other factories to start making bunkers for the Canadian market. I have to give technology to people around the world because I can't personally make enough bunkers to save enough people in the world. I have to spread my technology, my intellectual property, my patents, my designs, and it's not rocket science, it's just I've got it down right. And uh, I never thought that I personally would be put on a world stage from so many countries and so many people to deliver a product to them. It's like people, I mean, it's just a bunker, I'm just making a bunker. 
but it's how I made my air pipes where they compensate them for condensation. It's how I did the gas pipe doors because I'm not thinking fallout. I'm thinking this biological warfare or bi a natural biological attack. What are we gonna do if you can't even breathe the air because you may die? You have to go to an airtight chamber. So the Atlas shelter is that airtight chamber. This is why I emphasize using those gas tight doors. Also, if you're running a diesel generator or a gasoline generator or something like that, in a mudroom, you can't have the carbon monoxide coming back in the bunker. So I always put like three doors between the generator room and the actual bunker. So I've created this bunker system, I call it. And it's the Platinum Series is the one I'm selling. But you see my factory, it's 100% full. There's millions and millions of dollars of bunkers being made right there. And there's millions and millions of dollars of bunkers I haven't even started yet. So I thought this was going to happen. And I wish I'd had another year to prepare the factory because we are just now starting the automated process. So now it's going to look like a Ford automotive plant. We're actually going to try to get five bunkers out per day. Five per day out of the just one wing and then one per day out of the other wing. So we're gonna make a standard bunker, a 10 by 20 bunker called the safe zone that's gonna have the Swiss air system, the gas type door, a nuclear blast hat, this AR500 bulletproof with stairs, a mudroom, everything you need, all the life support systems. It sells for $100,000, it sounds like a lot of money, but the thing weighs 30,000 pounds and steel's like $1.25 a pound. So right there, the steel loan's about $40,000 in this $100,000 bunker, you got a $10,000 air system, you got $4,500 doors, you got a $6,000 hatch. So just by raw materials right there is like 60 some thousand dollars before labor, paint, sandblasting, marketing, and overhead. So I'm not getting rich on these, but I am a business, we are in business to make money, but my main concern is to get enough bunkers built and into the marketplace so people at least have a chance. Now, like I said, I hope they never need them. And all the bomb shelters through history have all been made, billions and billions of dollars of bomb shelters. And not one of them has ever had to be used yet to protect anybody from nuclear warfare. Yet, 60 years later, after the Cold War, in the 1960s and all that stuff with Russia, we are back in the same spot again no. where it is relevant. You know, I mean, all uh, political opinions aside, you know, we've seen what's happening in Ukraine right now at the Azovstal steel plant, where underneath there they have this network of tunnels and bunkers that were built for that exact purpose, for the for the purpose of war. And these guys were holed up there for, what, two months, two and a half months? So these bunkers were able to not only act as uh, bunkers, but also as a fortress. I'm not saying that that's what yours are going to do, but it's just a testament to the utility of something like that in a war zone goes beyond mere, you know, surviving fallout, which is not to minimize that or to minimize biological warfare, but these bunkers also serve other potential purposes. What concerns me about what you're saying is I know you personally, and I know you're not like a, you know, a doomsday prepper. You're not a person who, hypes you know, it. who hypes it and, you know, talks about the end of the world like you just kind of did right now. That's, that's concerning because it's, I, I know that this isn't a sales pitch. I know no. that this is what you sincerely believe, which is, you know, I mean, obviously we're, we're in this prepping space and this is all we think about, but, you know, I think you, you know, knowing what I know about what's going on in the world right now, there's a good likelihood that there is gonna be a major conflict at some point. And, you know, what the outcomes of that are gonna be, nobody knows, but it's probably not gonna be good and we're not gonna be insulated over here in our, you know, separated by two oceans. Uh, I think at some point it will come to us in some way, shape, or form. So get your bunkers, get your gold backs, get your food to fill your bunker, get your stuff while you can. And like Ron says, appreciate everything you got because uh, someday all of this, all of this may not be here. So sorry to end on such a depressing <laughs> note, guys. I, you got anything positive to end this video with? No, like I said, I hope I, I hope I'm I hope I'm wrong. Did but, you hunt a lot of ducks when you were down? No, I saw, I saw some geese while I was here, but uh, uh, even when I'm shooting the geese, I'm taking that in. Yeah, we won't be able to travel if if World War Three breaks out. We're not going to be able. Now I'm going to I'm going to Argentina on June 10th because I'm going to start seeking out the best places on earth to hide. And I'm starting with going in the Southern Hemisphere to the Southern part of Argentina. 
So I'm going down there to seek out a place where people can go down there, bug out and hide. And then after that, I'm going to Australia and New Zealand. So I'm actually seeking the top 10 places where you should bug out in case Armageddon comes. That will be interesting. You say that with a smile on your face, <laughs> well, which is so weird. <laughs> I, know, I know, I know, it's weird. It's like, like I'm the happy prepper or something, but no, but um, you know what? Look, I, a lot of bad things have happened to me in my lifetime and I always try to come out of it with a smile between getting cancer, having surgery, having my offices burnt down. You know what? I have, uh, well, I have God on my side, okay? So as long as I got the Lord above, I'm gonna have the soul in my heart and I'm always gonna stay happy. So that's all I can say about that. Right on guys. Go check out Atlas Survival Channel on YouTube. Check out some of those bunker videos he's putting out. Really fascinating stuff. And check out our interviews from the past. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. Canadian Prepper out. The best way to support this channel is to support yourself by gearing up at CanadianPreparedness.com, where you'll find high quality survival gear at the best prices, no junk, and no gimmicks. Use discount code Prepping Gear for 10% off. Don't forget the strong survive, but the prepared thrive. Stay safe.